Hi, Dr. Nikki Gonzalez from Balanced Physical Therapy. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the kettlebell swing. Uh, three keys to it and any common mistakes that we tend to see. So we're going to be focusing on the three keys being efficiency, rhythm, and velocity. So the most efficient way to perform this exercise is to keep the weight as close to your center of mass as possible. So I'm going to pick up the kettlebell. So for my setup, uh, refer back to our deadlift uh, video with regards to specifics. Uh, but we're going to be doing essentially the same sort of positioning. So I'm going to have a slight bend in my knees, but it's mostly going to be coming here at my hips. So I want to keep the weight as close as possible to decrease that weight away from the body, which increases our potential for injury in our back. So you'll notice that I, as, uh, as I go through this, I'm going to be keeping it nice and close to my body. And there's two main phases. There's the drive phase when I'm extending in my hips and driving forward. And then there's the catching phase as I'm hinging backwards and decelerating the momentum of the kettlebell. So an example. So you'll notice that I had a good rhythm in that sense, where as soon as the bar, as soon as I decelerated the kettlebell, here I was exploding through my hips, allowing my momentum to come forward, and then rhythmically catching it again and back up. And the last thing you notice was velocity. This is a power exercise for our hip musculature and hamstrings. So we want to be moving quickly. We want to be not necessarily uh, out of control, but we want it to be a controlled amount of aggression and power. So now we're going to take a look at it from the side view to make sure that I'm using this hip hinge pattern uh, well. So as I pick up the kettlebell again, I want to really focus like there's a, a hinge that goes right through my hips and I'm just, all I'm doing is swiveling on that hinge, okay? So you guys can check my form here. Okay, so common mistakes that we see with this exercise is taking this uh, complex motion and turning it into two separate motions. So most commonly we see a squat and then a shoulder raise. So you'll notice this is not rhythmic, does not have particularly much velocity, and I'm not really using my hip muscles. I'm using mostly quads and shoulders. So look at me from the side. The difference of a squat to shoulder raise compared to a hinge into a thrust. Thanks for checking out this video. If you found this information particularly useful, please check us out on our Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube pages at balancedptmove.com. Thank you.